Episode 5 starts out with everybody's favorite day, payday. But in the Turner household, it's pretty informal, with Sean just slipping an envelope of cash under Leanne's door. She comes downstairs to find Sean yelling for Dorothy, and Sean says, can you go check on her? And when Leanne does, Dorothy is in one of those zombie-like states. When Leanne touches her, she snaps out of it, but she's giving Leanne crazy eyes. Although she has the audacity to say that it's Sean who's acting weird because he's being nice, but apparently Sean's not nice to anybody. And to put her mind at ease, Leanne says, I'm sure he's not having an affair with anybody. But that was the farthest thing from Dorothy's mind. Although now it's on Dorothy's mind. Just wasn't the right place to say that. Sean tells Leanne, I'm not going to be around much this week. You'll be all right on your own, right? And Leanne says, I won't be alone. I'll have Jericho. But as Leanne's leaving the house, taking Jericho on one of his walks, she notices that there's a guy parked in a car outside just sitting in it. She didn't think anything of it. And as she's walking in the street, passing a stoop, she passes a girl around her age with a little girl probably about the age of six. Although when she returns home, the door is open and she's a little freaked out. She hears something in the basement and when she goes to investigate, she finds Toby. Toby was told to come over and do some prep work. And she starts to yell at him for leaving the door open, but he says, I didn't come through the front door. I came through the side. I used the spare key under the grill. He shows her one of the items that he brought over for Sean, and it's a box full of crickets. But their conversation is derailed when there's a knock at the door, and it's that girl about her age who was on the stoop. And she's knocking on the door because Leanne forgot to bring in Jericho's stroller, which isn't the smartest move in the city. I literally had one stolen outside of my house when I just ran in for two minutes. That's why I implore you to just let the ads run. I have to buy a new one. I digress. This girl's name is Wanda. She's with a little girl named Olivia, and she tells Leanne that they're locked out of their place. But she is familiar with who the Turners are, so it's not really raising any red flags. Although, she's not really acting the part of somebody that lives on the block because she keeps complimenting how nice the house is and looking up how much it went for. When Toby comes upstairs, he sees this random girl sitting on the couch with a six-year-old and asks Leanne, is everything okay? But Leanne shoes him off, saying, yeah, everything's fine. You can leave now. Although Wanda gets a phone call and excuses herself. But when she comes back, she tells Leanne that she has to run downtown and pay a fine or her boyfriend is getting deported. And she asks Leanne if she can watch Olivia for a little bit. Leanne says, yeah, no problem. So Wanda heads off, promising she's only going to be about an hour. And Leanne and Olivia decide to play hide-and-go-seek. And Leanne is the seeker to start out, and she checks down in the cellar. When she goes in there, she hears something on the ground, and when she picks up a box, there's a giant rat. Somehow that does not freak her out. I mean, this thing is massive. But what really catches her eye is a onesie. It's crumpled up, it's dirty. She's kind of wondering what it's doing there. Although when she hears footsteps upstairs, she runs up and checks on Olivia, who lets her know that a guy was in the house and ran out. It really freaks Leanne out, and her, Olivia, and Jericho wait on the stoop for Wanda to come back, who eventually does, apologizing for taking so long and saying, okay, I can take Olivia home now. And as Leanne is watching Wanda and Olivia walk back to their house because it's only about a block away, she notices that that car that was parked outside with the guy sitting in it is still there. Although she has to go run out and get supplies because she's running low on tomato soup, the only food that she seems to eat. She does that, puts it away, and even catches Dorothy's story that night on hygiene problems at the makeup stations and stores but then she gets a knock on her bedroom door and it's dorothy asking her if she wants a piece of cake and when poor leanne says yeah i'd love some cake instead of handing her cake dorothy hands her cash saying it's about 40 minutes there and back and leanne doesn't seem to really have a choice so she heads out to go get the turner some cake luckily though don't worry she gets to keep the change but when she returns with the cake she goes upstairs to give Dorothy what she just spent 40 minutes going to get to find out that Dorothy and Sean are having sex. I mean, good for them, but kind of rude. And Leanne heads back to her bedroom, doesn't eat the cake, but what she does do is open up her Bible and write Dorothy in one of the margins. The next day when Leanne wakes up, Dorothy has a giant zit on her face from the makeup bar. But Leanne brings up the fact that, quote, you didn't eat your cake, and Dorothy lies to her saying that her and Sean just had an early night but thanks her for going to get it. After the Turners leave for work, Leanne once again takes Jericho out and notices that the same guy is in the same car outside. The guy is the P.I. She walks across the street and goes to Wanda's house, but when she knocks on the door, she finds out that there is no Wanda. Nobody by that description lives there. There's no Olivia. There's nobody. She was lied to. And this revelation is really upsetting to Leanne. When she returns home from the walk, she notices that once again, someone is in the house. And she starts to go from room to room when she hears the person come downstairs. The PI, though, doesn't notice her, punches in the security code, and leaves. 
And you got to figure he was there just collecting information. But after he leaves, Leanne seems a little more comfortable and does some laundry. She even washed that onesie that she found in the basement. And as she's folding it, she hears a cricket. She goes to put it back in the box, but all of the crickets that were in there are gone. She doesn't really think anything of it, though. She heads upstairs and starts dressing up Jericho in that onesie. But when Sean sees it, he gets enraged, asking, where the hell did you find that? You can tell he's really upset about this, and it kind of catches Leanne off guard. Leanne's saved, though, when Dorothy comes in and asks, what everybody wants her food, Indian or Greek. And Sean doesn't care because he can't taste anything, and the only thing that Leanne eats is tomato soup, so it's on Dorothy. That night, though, Leanne is brushing her teeth, and she hears yet another cricket. This one is coming out of the sink. Once again, though, she doesn't really think anything of it. She heads downstairs to overhear a conversation between Sean and Julian about getting her out of the house. Julian calls her a freak and tells Sean, let her know she's not welcome. If it was up to him, he would shut up the heat in her room. But Sean yells at him saying, that's really your answer? Practical jokes? Because Sean is holding a can of dog food. And after overhearing this conversation, when Leanne heads back upstairs, she writes Sean's name in one of those margins. The next morning, though, when she wakes up, her entire bed and her entire bedroom floor are covered in crickets. And one by one, she actually recollects them and puts them back in the box in the cellar. She returns upstairs to find Dorothy trying to get another splinter out of Sean, this time a giant one in his neck. And after they do that, she grabs some duct tape because she heads upstairs to start duct taping the vents to make sure no more crickets get in. But one has, she traps it under her glass and heads downstairs to make some more tomato soup. But when she puts it in the pot, it looks nothing like tomato soup. It doesn't smell like tomato soup. So she goes to throw it out. And that's when she finds the dog food stuff. She knows that she's being messed with and it's not sitting well with her at all. She doesn't have a lot of time to dwell on it though because she gets a knock at the door and it's Wanda and Olivia. And she doesn't reveal to them that she knows they don't live in that house. They just walk in and start kind of hanging out, and it seems like Olivia wants a snack, and when Leanne says, hey, is this cool? Gesturing to the lobster ice cream, Wanda says, yeah, I don't care, even though she previously told Leanne not to feed her because she's allergic to everything. And I guess that information has slipped Leanne's mind because she gives her a bowl of ice cream. Wanda starts to pitch Leanne on leaving the Turners, because she can get a better job somewhere else in the city. But Leanne tells her, I'm not leaving. She then walks over and is just staring outside of the window. And everything that's happened in the last couple days is coming to a crescendo. She's speaking aloud, saying, how was I supposed to know about that onesie? And if she wanted me out of the house, she just could have asked. Wanda's kind of curious on what the hell she's talking about, but then all of a sudden Olivia starts hacking up a lung because she's allergic to the ice cream. And Wanda realizes she's having an allergic reaction. She frantically tries to get her EpiPen, but... She's just unloading her purse, and the EpiPen actually ends up going near Leanne's foot. But in this frantic state, Wanda can't find it. And instead of helping, Leanne just screams, You don't live on this block, do you, Wanda? Who sent you? Who told you to be friends with me? And Wanda reveals that it was Julian. Julian paid her to befriend her and try to convince her to leave. The whole time, Wanda is begging her to help out Olivia, and finally, Leanne picks up the EpiPen, stabs her, and sends them on their way. That night, while she's in her room, Leanne definitely feels like she's been betrayed, but she gets a knock at her bedroom door, and it's Sean wanting to know if he can borrow her for five minutes, because Sean still doesn't have any taste buds. And the crickets weren't just pets, they were food. He's injecting these baked crickets with a sort of fruit, but he needs a taste subject, and it seems like Leanne's palate's pretty good. She picks up one of the crickets and says, my aunt used to say that when a cricket came into your home, something bad was coming. And Sean asks, what's coming, Leanne? But Leanne doesn't answer, simply popping the cricket into her mouth and telling Sean that it's too sticky. And Sean changes the crickets up a little bit, has Leanne test them, and actually thanks her, saying, I couldn't do this without you. But Leanne isn't in a smiling mood at the moment. She goes upstairs where that cricket that she left is dead. She undresses and starts whipping herself. And as she's whipping herself, suddenly that cricket ends up coming back to life. Thank you so much for watching this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video if you liked it. Hit thumbs down if you thought it sucked. If you don't see the next video up in the end screen, don't worry, it'll be up soon. And please be nice in the comments section. Nobody likes being told they suck, even if it's true. Oh, and you know, sharing's caring.